Jeff, Jeff. Oh. Well, I guess they're watching us. Are we still on? Yeah. We're oh, we're still on. We're so, still on. Uh, as we wait for Jeff to come back. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, uh, you know, when, I know this seems odd, but <laughs> this stuff happens when you start talking about aliens and governments and things. They tune in. Uh, one of the things I, when I first tuned into Jeff's show, as I was told, somebody had tuned into his show from um, aliens, I guess, but I was told to warn him, which I did. Um, and I had a huge attack, kind of a psychic attack, which lasted about three days. Um, but these are kinds of things that happen, and people need to start waking up that our government, um, you know, aliens, they're all kind of together, and it's not necessarily for the good of humanity. So start taking notice of things in the news, movies, um, things that are out there on what's happening. Um, you know, and I have a friend, Carrie, who turns in and she gets nervous every time I start talking about this. But you have to talk about it. You have to start waking up to what's going on. So, you know, hopefully we're going to get Jeff back. Um, hey, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yes. This, this is what happens to me when I am trying to give information. That's what I was going to say. Yep. Yep. Um, now, matter of fact, I just got a... Um, a text on my 24 hour hotline says, dude, you are now off the air. Hold on, let me yeah. get you. Okay. Oh um, my can, god. Can, can you see me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh um, my god. I have my DSL box right here, and it went to red and started, I, as soon as I started to mention the ancient ruins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh that my is not, that, that is not the first time that has happened. And your cell phone said, dude, you're off the air? Yeah, well, I have somebody. I have somebody who's watching the show right now and just wanted to advise me of that. Oh. So, but um, that uh, and, and, and I, I didn't do it, guys. I'm just here talking away, and this happens. This is not the first time this has happened. So they actually did that. Okay, I'm trying, and you guys know who I'm talking about, Donna and Nori. Yes, I was just explaining that this would happen probably. So what? Uh, where did you? Where did I leave off? So you were. You had made it to the ruins. Okay. Um, we made it to the ruins. Now. So I videotaped it, and what I recorded. Now you have to understand. When I went down on Google, I was looking on. You know, from Google downward, and I was looking for the surrounding areas around that that particular site, and. What's kind of awesome is that I found what looked like to be um, some type of a, a, a I said, what's it called? Oh my God, just, this, this whole knocking down the video just blew me away. Um, you know, in Peru, you know those 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 lines, those, those pictures on the side of a hill in Peru that you can only see from the sky, the, the oh my God, the Inca lines, what do you call them? I have no idea. Oh my God, the... Yeah. Um, Nazca lines, jeez Louise, Jeff. <laughs> well, they're called Nazca lines. In Peru, you can only see these um, these drawings on the earth floor from high above. There, there's, they've actually seen, uh, there's a monkey, a spider, I believe a snake, but you can only visually see these from the sky. And the Inca and the Mayans used to draw this for their gods, because I, I, that's the only way they can see it. Now, North of Fresno, if you go to that particular video, there is a drawing on the ground of a blackbird on a long limb with a nest. And this can only be seen from the sky. Mm. And it is very, very large. And it is very close to these ruins. Now, these ruins, um, what I think they are is back in the 30s and the 40s, they were mining for minerals there. The main street is called Copper Avenue. So I think they were, you know, mining for copper and minerals and gold and all that. And in, in the process of doing that, they discovered these things buried. Now, when you look at the video, you'll notice that there is uh, a brick. There's actually bricks there. And when I got there, um, I, I went to that particular spot and I noticed it, it looked like a jail. 
So what I'm thinking is that back in the day, the gold rush, the minerals, they decided to make a jail utilizing what they found there. But what I find interesting is that there's a lot of stuff still buried out there. And for all that, for all those ruins to be buried like that in all tons and tons of dirt, that, that has been like that for over hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, I called the archaeology department of Sacramento. And when I had the video on, on YouTube, I was talking to the second... Uh, the, the guy there who was second in charge of the archaeology department out of, out of California in Sacramento and I was talking to him and I said could you do me a favor, could you go and I gave him the link, go to YouTube and watch this video while I have you on the air so you can help me and find out what this is so he did and he's watching it you know he's awfully quiet and then um, I'm narrating him on what he's looking at and then he says where is this Jeff? And I said, it's somewhere in North Fresno. And then at that point, I, you know, I, that, that when he said that, I knew I, I had come across something because an ar the archaeology department for California should know where all this stuff is at. I don't care if it's um, Civil War, you know, ruins of kind of Indian ruins, any type of ruins, they know where all this stuff is at. But this guy did not know what the hell I was showing him. And... Um, I told him, okay, I'm going to throw some questions at you and see if you can answer them. Um, and he told me he was a professor in, in Indian artifacts, so he knew what the Indian artifacts, um, you know, how they made their how, their homes, all that kind of stuff. And I said, okay, is that what you, what you are looking at, was that built by the Indians? And he said, no. I said, okay. If for some reason they were mining for gold there back in the gold rush era, would they have built something like this? And he says, no, because, you know, in the gold rush era, you would um, mine for gold, and you would move to a spot, and move to another spot. You would not build a compound made of brick, like, or, or rock, like you see there. And I said, okay, it's a civil war. And he says, no, because all the civil war uh, forts are on the, the, the west coast. And I said, okay. Since we got all that out of the way, I go, does that look like Inca or Mayan work? And he was quiet. And he says, yes, it does. And I'm going, yes. So what you see, there's a large wall that is still buried under tons and tons of dirt. They were excavating it, but they stopped for some reason. And what I believe that this continues under that hill where that house is on top and there is very a lot more still buried there that still hasn't been uncovered now what what blows me away is that the archaeology department out of sacramento has no clue what this is or where it's at fresno state i can notify their department no clue have no idea where this is at the historical society out of fresno no clue, no idea what this is at. But this is located north of Fresno, that, and it's near the hills, and there's certain houses surrounding it. And no one knows what this stuff is. And what's kind of odd, though, is you have to understand that there's so much weird stuff happening north of Fresno that nothing surprised me anymore. When we trespassed onto that property, as we were getting closer, I was looking at houses around that site, and people were watching us, but they weren't doing anything. And there was one house particular north of that hill that I saw people running. And you know what they were doing? No. They were running. They were running, in, and they were getting into their white vehicles and running them into the garages and shutting the garage doors down. Why? And because. They were white vehicles. Oh. Oh, so, okay, so the houses that are built around this hill then, do you are, think that those are the people that drive the white vans? Those, those, those are the watchers of that particular area. Oh. How many houses are up there? A lot. There's oh. a lot. But, um, I mean, there are more houses, you know, to the, to the west of it, but the houses that are in the area where all of this UFO sightings have been happening, um, you know, there's a lot of white trucks and white cars parked. But what's weird is, I mean, literally, when I saw these guys running, jumping in the car and running them into the garages and shutting the garage down, like they did not want me to see the white vehicles. So
So more than one, one more than what more than one house did that? Yeah. Oh, okay. What's now, with what's with the weird statues out there? Now, it's, it's, it's actually kind of weird that this past Sunday, uh, me and my buddy Jimmy, we went looking for spots. Just we we went looking, and and, and I'll tell you a reason why we went looking, but. Um, we actually decided that Jimmy had never been there, and I said, "You want to, you want me to take you to the spot where this, you know, these ruins are?" And he said, "Yes." So I actually, for the first time, drove up the dirt road to the top of the house. Now, when we got up there, there was um, a lot of pottery making up there. There were statues up there, pottery, all types of pottery, um, uh, template tiles. Just, just, you know, fountains. So, the person who owns that property and lives in that house, who wasn't there because I knocked on the door, were into art. So, what I'm thinking is that that particular person there is the owner of the ruins down below, and for the hell of it, he decided to put up different types of art and to decorate it. They're kind of freaky looking. Yes, very it's freaky. Is there, now, you seen that? Yeah, it's all, I saw the footage. Oh. It's weird looking. <laughs> now, um, it be, and I knew it was his or hers or whoever it was that because a lot of the stuff that's down there by the ruins is up there on the top of the house as oh, well. Oh, and, okay. and, even, and even Jimmy, who was with me, says, you know what this reminds me of? He goes, this reminds me of the stuff Indians used to do back in the days. And I'm going... I you know I never thought of it. I never thought of that. That maybe that particular hill is on Indian property and is private property, and it has been kept hidden away from the public forever. Why I don't know. But um, what makes me think that these particular structures are Inca and Mayan is on the bottom wall that that's below and, and uncovered, the wall, it, it, it slanted like a pyramid. Right. Now, now when I was down there, that wall, as it's, as it's going straight, look, I'm going to go this way, as it's going straight, comes to a spot, and it goes out, and it makes like a little, um, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it, it comes out a little, and it goes back in like a decoration, okay? And I'm going... You know, if, if I was mining for copper or, or, you know, mining for minerals, there would be no reason to put that little um, decoration on that particular wall. And it was nicely done. So it's telling me that, and even the guy, the archaeology uh, from the Department of Sacramento was telling me, he goes, Jeff, he goes, what you see there took years to build. And I'm going, I know it did, because, you know, everything is so square, precise, um, and and he for the life, he wanted me to tell him where this stuff was, and I did it. Matter of fact, a lot of people want to know where this place is at, and I'm not telling them, because, you know, um, I, I, I'm still trying to get to the bottom of this, but what you see there is north of Fresno, and, and what I'm thinking happened is that when they were mining for minerals back then, in the 30s and 40s, they uncovered this by accident, and the military moved in, and they found underground caverns and caves, and I think that's when the military moved in and started to find all these underground caverns and utilize, are starting to utilize all of them, and that's why now we have underground facilities out there because of that. But you're able to go over there and not get bothered? Um, well, I, you know, we drove up there on Sunday, and I, there's a long, a, a long dirt road to take you up and around the top of the hill. You know, no one did anything. No one stopped us. You know, it was private property. We went up there, and I knocked on the door. I actually left a little note and a business card for the Second Paranormal Society. I told them to give me a call. I was interested in the ruins down below. I guarantee you they're not going to call me. But, um, I, you know, I... I Wanted to show Jimmy, and but like at that point in time, you know, no one stopped us or anything. Um, now you have to understand that, being that if this is Inca Mayan pyramids or ancient ruins like that, you have to understand that you know Mexico City.
City, Peru, Stonehenge, wherever there are ancient ruins, what do you have on top of that? You always have UFO sightings. Mm. Always. Why do you think we're having so much UFO sightings or the front though around these ruins? But but then again, um, you didn't say whether they, you thought maybe that they were United States UFOs. Well, um, okay, now, let's, let's, okay, now, I forgot to answer that question. Um, we have the National Guard here in Fresno, the California National Guard, the 144th Fighter Wing, who is stationed at the Fresno Airport. So, let's talk about this. We have, we are seated right in the middle of Area 51, China Lake, Lemoore Naval Air Base, and in Fresno, at the airport, we have our California National Guard. These guys, these jets here, take care of California's coast, and they are controlled by NORAD. NORAD is the defense system out of Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado, I think it's Colorado, and um, if there is some, I mean, our guys at NORAD know where everything is in space over every country on Earth. If there is something going over our airspace, they will notify the National, the National Guard, you know, that, that takes care of that particular state get them up there to find out what it is. We have caught several times here in Fresno these jets taking off and chasing UFOs over Fresno. We've actually got them on video. Now, we had an incident the last week of October, just recently, where my 24-hour hotline ran off the, I mean, it rang off the hook. I got over 20 calls, and they were all pretty much describing me what was occurring that night. Everybody saw weird lights, triangles going over Fresno, and these triangles, I mean triangles, the jets, three to four of them taken off out of the airport with full afterburners. I mean, I, would, I remember because that night I was upstairs, and all of a sudden my house started to shake because, you know, we live... Uh, four or five miles from the airport. But when the jets take off, you know, you know when they take off, I can hear, I can tell them apart from airplanes and little airplanes. But as soon as they took off, afterburners on, meaning they were open, their throttles were open and those suckers were just going bad, bad out of hell, whatever they were going after. And what's awesome is that I had a military personnel call me his name is Mike. I had him on my radio show the week after that occurred. And he pretty much described to me what everybody was describing to me. And I had him pretty much say, all right, Mike. He goes, are you sure these things were chasing them? He goes, Mike goes, yes, they were. They were chasing them. I mean, you know, being a eight-year veteran from Iraq, now medically disabled, he knows what jets look like when they're chasing something, you know, as far as, you know, either trying to shoot them down or in hot pursuit. They were not escorting these things. They were after them, trying to surround them. And stuff like that has been happening over Fresno as well. And we've actually got a couple of videos that show jets chasing these crafts. I have sky watchers now who, who sky watch for me uh, in Fresno. And they have gotten so many stuff on video, it's ridiculous. If you just go in and type Fresno UFOs, you'll have video after video after video come up. A lot of them are, you know, airplanes and helicopters, but there are a lot of them on there that do not make sense, and they should be flying in our airspace. Um, where again, you know, I have, I remember now three incidences where we've had these jets take off out of the out of the airport here in Fresno and chase these things. That's telling me they're not ours. Now, your question was, then, do you believe that these, you know, crafts can be from outer space? Well, if we're chasing them, they, I don't think they're going to be in other countries. Because if, if like, Russia is flying a craft over Cal Fresno, California, that's an act of war. Okay, it's as simple as that. Same goes for any other country. So they wouldn't be that stupid to be flying, you know, on a craft of theirs over our airspace. So if it's not one of another countries and it's not one of ours and it's not one of our top secret aircraft, why would our jet be chasing it? That, that's stupid. I mean, you know, 
for a jet to accidentally crash trying to, you know, chase after a top secret airplane doesn't make any sense to me. Even Mike, the military guy, said, you know, if, if we're going to be testing this stuff, we should be over the desert, Area 51, or over the ocean. You know, why would they jeopardize top secret, you know, aircraft flying over a town where somebody could pull out a video camera and record it and poof, you know, show it to the world, hey, haha, look what I got on video. Um, and now they know, you know, I, the military knows I have sky watchers out every night almost looking up into the sky. Um, so, are these crafts that are jets chasing after ours? No. Do I believe they belong to another country? No. Um, do, are they top secret and our jets are just trading over front though? No, I don't think that's the case. So, I don't think they belong here on Earth, to be honest. Now, I've heard that there's so many different descriptions of a UFO. Now, you're talking about a triangle. I've heard, like you said earlier, a tin can, a cigar shape. There's so many different descriptions of these UFOs. Right. Um, 85% of them, 90% are triangles. That particular incident at the last week of October where Mike, the military guy, witnessed all this, and, and this goes for all the other witnesses too. Um, you, you can go back and listen to my show where I have the three witnesses on there. They say there was three lights in triangle formation, or that's what it looked like to be, and they were moving at a high rate of speed, and the jets were almost onto them, and these three lights turned into one, and into a bright blue light, the blue light increased in brightness, and poof, it disappeared. Hmm. Just like that, and that, and that's what exactly the way all the witnesses described it. They said all three lights turned into one bright light, and it like they increased in brightness, and it just like disappeared, like it went into. I don't know. I, I'm not going to say what it did, but it just disappeared right in front of the jets. You know, like okay. <laughs> um, do we have the technology to do something like that? I don't think so. I don't believe it was ours. I don't. I really don't. So Donna had mentioned earlier that our technology is coming from somewhere, and so um, so do you also believe that um, these aliens are working with our scientists and our big top people? I think what's going on is that you have these multi-billion dollar companies like uh, um, Rockwell, um, you know, um, Apple, possibly, uh, Hewlett Packard, um, and even AT&T, for example. And I believe that when we discover off of a craft that we have somewhere and we figured out that, hey, you know, this is what we have. We figured out what it does. I think what happens is the government hands a little bit of this stuff to each one of the companies that are in the United States for them to utilize it and to put it into our, uh, you know, environment and to go with it. You know, and, and I think that's what's happening because uh, the reports that, that have come in back in the days where they said they've actually seeing these crafts, people describe little white tubings of light in one of these crafts. And right away, that describe, that description it reminded me of fiber optics. Um, so, you know, um, uh, some of these crafts, they say, have had very thin, like, video screens inside these crafts. I mean, how, I mean, look, look at the size of our TVs now. You know, the, you know, they're like, you know, I don't know, two inches thick, you know, and look at the size of our TV and our cell phones. Look at how incredible this is. This is crazy. You know, where are we getting this stuff from? Obviously, it's coming from someplace. Do you think any of our famous people from years and years ago, like Einstein era and all that, do you think any of them could have been a UFO or an alien? Um, that, I don't know. I don't know. Um. That that's hard. I think I think you know Einstein was just a brain. I think he was just a smart cookie. Uh, 
But, you know, um, you know, there's just so much stuff going on. You know, sometimes I lay in bed at night trying to put two, and two together, and it comes out 59. <laughs> you know, it's just so much stuff going on out there that what, pe- what, what people think, there's a, there's, a, there's a quote that I say, but what you think is the truth is not. What you what people think is actually for you know is going on. They have no freaking clue what's going on right now on Earth. No freaking clue. And I believe that what you see now on TV and in the past, they're trying to condition everybody um, for what's going to be happening in the near future. And I, I've talked about that where I believe that there are certain companies and producers that are given information to put out there. And I think, and and, and let's talk about a third producer, let's talk about Steven Spielberg, okay? Um, Rumor has, well actually it's actually fact, that when Steven Spielberg put out clothing count, no, it was E.T. When he put out E.T., he actually went in and had a private screening for Ronald Reagan. And as Ronald Reagan and Mrs. Reagan were watching E.T. with Steven Spielberg, President Reagan leaned over to Spielberg and said, Tim, and, and I'm trying to get the wording for it because I have it written down someplace, but it said, he said, if you only knew how close you are, or something of that nature. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and uh, you have to understand, too, Ronald Reagan, if you remember, in one of his speeches to the U.N., specified that we need to put some type of a defense air system, uh, a missile system in space because one of these days we might get attacked by aliens. And he actually said that on YouTube. You can go on YouTube. That's there. Type in Ronald Reagan, speech of the UN, uh, defense systems, uh, uh, aliens, and boom. It's him talking about that. So Ronald Reagan, to this day, knew what was going on. And I think that um, Steven Spielberg, because of his, I mean, the, the Steven Spielberg is a brilliant man when it comes to producing and directing. I mean, he has, I mean, let's, let's talk about his movies. How many movies has he done that have to do with aliens? Think about it. I mean, you're, I, mean I, I only have ten fingers. We can go more now. I mean, um, from what I understand, from Cold Encounters of the Third Kind, Steven Spielberg was actually shown aliens from a downed craft from someplace, and that's what he used to model the aliens from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And again, you can go on the internet and pull all this stuff up. I'm not making this up. I'm not pulling this out of a hat. This is all on the internet for you to look at. And there's, you know, from what I am telling you, and I actually have a piece. Oh my God, I wonder if I have it. Oh, yeah, you know what? Um, I actually have. Do you mind if I do yeah. something up right Yeah, here? go ahead. Um, I want to see if it's here. If I hold it, I can bring it up. God, please let it be here. Come on, come on. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, God, is this it? Hold on. I hope I didn't race it. Hold on.
Oh, and by the way, do you believe in aliens? And everybody in the audience starts laughing. <laughs> Well, Steven Spielberg answers the question, answers her first question, and at the very end says, and by the way, I do believe in aliens, in, in a serious, in a serious tone. And that's on YouTube. Okay, what the heck was it? Oh, my son, it's on, oh, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. Um, and that actually, what the heck is going on here? Um, and that's actually for real. He actually said that. So, um, you know, it's like, that, that's telling me that he's in the know-how. Steven Spielberg is in the know-how. I'll, I'll pull up, I have it saved on my phone. I actually recorded it and okay. played it over my microphone on one of my shows. But um, he's, it, it, and he said it not in a joking way. And he says, and I do believe in aliens. Mm. You guys are quiet. But we're, we're taking it yes. all in. This is so fascinating. <laughs> that, and, now, and, you saw, and, you thought that, and, you, and you guys were right. There's no way we can put all this in uh -huh. your show. I mean, I mean, I, I haven't even broken. Oh, my God, there's so much going on. I can keep you on have so thing. much going on. I mean, um, you've got you've got Bigfoot, and then you've got the Mothman, and all this uh, alien uh, stuff. You want to talk about that? we got, like, no, 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 no. We're no, saving that time. for next Tuesday. Oh, so what what do you think, because for a while, everybody was seeing crop circles, and I know I used to live on Whidbey Island, which is a naval, naval air station, and I actually saw something float across the sky Late at night, I was in a small town, everybody, the streets are all, nobody's on the streets. I come out of work, there's no sound, it's very quiet on Whidbey in Coopville. The next thing I know, I see this very long thing, the ship, this huge, you know, at least three houses long, floating across the sky. And it made no sound. It didn't. It, it, they said the next day, the, the military said it was in a... a a weather balloon, but it it was not a weather balloon. Um, it was huge, and and it just floated. And I'm looking around me, going, "Does anybody see this?" And I'm up by myself, and I just I all I said was, "Please don't take me. Please don't take me." Got in my car and took off. But it was pretty amazing to see. But soon after that was a crop circle in a farmer's um, crops, and they posted a picture of it. And it happened for a while, and then they quit, you know, talking about it. Crop circles. See, that's cool. Um, you are one of the lucky ones that have, still, you're very lucky to have seen something like that. Um, you know, there, that, all you have to do, you know, a majority of the sightings here in Fresno are from people who go outside to have a smoke, to take the trash out, mm -hmm. to take the dogs out, to do something really quick to get something out of the car. They look up. And there it is. Yeah. And that's when most of the sightings occur. Um, now, a lot of these sightings here in Fresno happened on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Why? Uh, my theory is that, again, a majority of them, I believe, are our crafts that are flying over the, you know, or they're just testing the waters. Now, the reason why I have figured out Sundays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, let's think about this. Sunday, Sunday night, it's a day before Monday. Like, you have to go back to work. The kids have to go to school. So everybody are, is indoors early on Sundays because they have to basically come down the weekend, get ready for bed, watch a little TV, and go to, you know, turn to bed, and then go, you know, go to bed and get up the next morning. Um, so they fly these things between the hours of 7.30 and 10.30 or 11 o'clock while people are now inside. There's not much traffic outside. The same thing goes for Wednesdays and Thursdays, hump days. The middle of the week, you know, you're exhausted. You got two more days to go before Friday, Wednesday and Thursday. You, everybody's pretty much indoors. I mean, aren't you? I am. Wednesday and Thursday, I don't do it. They stay, stay and they watch. See what's on Wednesday nights. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um, but, uh, but that's why I have come down, I, you know, I've kept, you know, documentation on sightings, and not about 95% of them are on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Wow. So what about crop circles? We don't have, I've never had any um, crop circles down here. Um, and the reason being is that most of the 
vegetation are mostly vineyards. We have vineyards, oranges, uh, and that is pretty much, you know, uh, trees. We have a lot of trees out here in the central San Joaquin Valley. So we don't get much of crop circles down here at all. I've never had a report of a single crop circle down here. Well, they kind of, you know, for a while it was a big thing. I know, you know, a number of them, people were learning how to fake them, but I know many of them were not fake. They, they would go out there and there was no way anybody could fake them. And then suddenly, I guess, maybe because too many people are noticing, you never hear about crop circles anymore. But for a while it was the biggest rage. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people have come out, like you said, they try, there, there are a lot of debunkers out there who just love to go out and fake people out. And right. they go out and they think they can do exactly what was done in the UK near Stonehenge. You know, they have a board and they have a rope on each board and they put the board down with their foot and they start doing this all the way around and try to, you know, create an image. You know, um, they actually have had contest where they actually have had a picture of a real crop circle and they have given it they've given the picture to like three teams and in the dead of night you know you can you have exactly five hours to build this picture and that feels go and they go out there with their little boards and they're and they, they they do a really well a pretty good damn good job at it but when you take a picture from a helicopter down on it you know, it is very sloppy, mm -hmm. and you know the lines aren't precise. When they bend the wheat or whatever crop they're at, they actually physically break the actual stem on it. Where on the original crop circle, these the the bending of the wheat are just bent. They're bent, mm -hmm. and they're not actually physically broken. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, how can you do that? You know, and not get and not. You can't. I mean, if you're gonna build a crop circle, well, you're gonna end up breaking, you know, the the stems of the of, of the wheat, and right. and all these original crop circles are not bad. They're not a single one broken. Well, in England, did they do testing on those crop circles? Wasn't there some kind of radiation? They were getting some kind of reading uh, from those fields. Some of those fields, they did. Yes, you're correct. They did come out and they, you know, with the Geiger counters, and they were getting some some readings of radio radioactive materials, and it's like. What are radioactive materials doing out here in the wheat fields in these crop circles? Good question. You so, know. what do you? Why do you think they're doing this? Um, Messages to each other, or coordinates, or something. Um, That's what it looks like. It's all geometric. All the shapes are geometric, and yeah, you know. Could be. Yeah, could be messages. It's like you sticky know. notes to each other. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, and and you think about the movie Signs. You know, oh, I love that. You know, inside the movie, they were basically markers for these spaceships on where to go and all that kind of stuff. But right. uh, a lot of people seem to think that they are actually signs for us to, you know, for people who could read these type of signs. You know, people are 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 you know trying to encrypt it and find out what they mean. But you know, I don't know. I mean. I can just tell you right now that the crop circles that I have seen out there are so elaborate, people could not have built that in one night. And they're so, huge. I mean, really. They're huge. They're oh, huge. Yeah. The, the round circles are so perfect. Yes. And you have hundreds of hundreds of different shapes interconnecting. And, it, it, you know, it's just no way. There's no way somebody with a board and a rope did that. I'm sorry. You're crazy. Jeffrey, why do you think they abduct certain people? Why did they, or they'll pick a family from generation to generation to generation. Why do they do that? Um, the family that I have talked to down here in Fresno who have, have been abducted, um, I, at this point in time, I can't give you an answer because I don't know. And you're right, there has been generations and generations where, you know, their families in the back then have also been abducted. I'm thinking maybe that um, they're trying to, I, I, obviously it's something medical, I'm thinking that they're trying to figure out a way how they can help maybe possibly 
possibly the human race with diseases, um, you know, cures, you know, I that's the only thing I can think of, you know, I, I don't, you know, the, a better human, I don't know, you know, a lot of people seem to think that uh, some of the abductions that they're actually stealing, you know, human e eggs from women and interbreeding with aliens and, you know, like this, like you're saying, star people, and that, that's how they're getting the uh, the mixed breeds. And, you know, there's just so much stuff like that going on that I don't know what to believe, but all that is out there. Okay, you know what? Um, we're going to continue our interview with you next Tuesday, 7.30. And um, so I know you'll be with us because we have so much more to ask you. Yeah. Right. And um, so, and can, can you say your website and then sure. the hotline for people who want to call you with their own sightings? Sure. Uh, the website SangerParanormalSociety.com. And Sanger is spelled S as in Sam, A N G E R. And uh, on the front homepage, you have my. UFO hotline, email, and 24-hour hotline. Wonderful. Um, and all that. And if you want to be a friend on Facebook, the link is there. Just bam, and your friend. I'll friend anybody. Doesn't bam. matter. And, uh, bam. Bam. Just uh, yeah. Just don't try to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have please don't. Problems of my own. I don't need more. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming and spending this time with us, and we look forward I to next week. That would quit, did it? Oh, yes, it really did. And I'm excited. I'm excited, Jeffrey, about next week. So yeah. I can't wait. So um, uh, I'll talk to you during the week. And um, and because I have a couple questions I want to ask you before the show next uh, Tuesday. But okay. uh, happy holidays. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas. Sure. And, and just, um, to let, just to let everybody know that um, the National Geographic is in town this week. Awesome. Awesome. Very exciting. So there, there's a, an enticement for people to stay tuned next week to find out why they're in town. Oh, and before you go, Jeffrey does have his own show. It's every Sunday night? Every Sunday night between 7 and 8. Wonderful. It's on SPS Radio. Um, it's on my website, the radio link, if you want to listen in. And it's all, you know, I have a studio here in my house. I talk everything paranormal, just like when I'm talking to you girls. It's, 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 no, it's everything to go. Awesome. So. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeffrey. Right. Good we'll night. Talk you. You, uh, we'll talk with you next week. Sounds good. I'll talk to you guys. Thank you uh, very much. Thanks. Thanks. See you all later.